The soil beneath your feet is red and dry. The place is freezing cold. Rusty colored dust is floating in the air. You make one step, then another. It's hard to move because of the thick layer of dust your feet are sinking into. You're on Mars, and you've come here after hearing some absolutely incredible news. These days, the so-called red planet indeed looks dry and dusty. But scientists think that this world might have been very different a long, long time ago. They have found some evidence of a huge ocean that could have existed on the surface of Mars about 3.5 billion years ago. And this ocean probably covered hundreds of thousands of square miles. It all started with numerous satellite images of the surface of the red planet. They were snapped at different angles. As a result, researchers managed to construct a relief map of the area. They charted out more than 4,000 miles of specific formations that had most likely been carved by rivers. Those formations could also be channels once carved out on the sea floor. Scientists used the data gathered by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter in 2007. They analyzed the thickness of the ridges and their angles and locations. Their main goal was to explore the topographical depression called Aeolus Dorsa. It turned out that all those years ago, this part of the red planet had been undergoing a series of constant changes. They could have been caused by the rapid movement of rocks, pulled around by currents and rivers, as well as noticeable increases in sea level. Researchers also noticed a pretty clear boundary that separated the southern highlands of Mars, elevated and highly cratered, from the smooth lowlands of the planet. It looked very similar to a shoreline left by a ginormous ocean. This all likely means that in ancient times, there indeed was an ocean on the surface of Mars, and a large one at that. What's even more exciting is that the existence of such an ocean might mean the existence of life. This discovery can tell scientists a lot about the ancient climate on the red planet, as well as its evolution. We now know there had to be a period on Mars when the planet was quite warm and its atmosphere was thick enough to keep so much liquid water. What's even more incredible, the climate in the northern hemisphere of Mars 3 billion years ago could have resembled the one we have on Earth nowadays. But then, where is this ocean now? What happened to it? Perhaps the climate of the red planet was becoming cooler and the surface of the ocean froze. There's a theory claiming that these days, the ocean remains in its frozen state, deep under a layer of rock, debris, and dust under a northern plain called Vastitis Borealis. Or, the ocean's waters could have been lost to the atmosphere, and, eventually, space, through the process of atmospheric sputtering. During this process, atoms get knocked away from the atmosphere after colliding with high-energy particles coming from the sun. Anyway, the theory of an ocean that once covered a substantial part of Mars's northern hemisphere hasn't been confirmed yet. Scientists are still arguing about its existence. As for now, Mars is a very cold world with an average temperature of negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The planet's surface is rocky. It's covered with dry lake beds, craters, volcanoes, and canyons. The ocean that might have existed on Mars isn't the only awesome thing about this planet. Let's speak about those sandstorms raging on the red planet. In movies, they're depicted as incredibly powerful forces of nature, destroying astronauts' camps and tearing their spaceships into pieces. But how much of it is true? Mars is indeed infamous for producing dust storms so massive they can be seen by telescopes on Earth. They sometimes cover continent-sized areas and can last for weeks at a time. But besides them, there are much rarer storms that occur once in three Mars years, which is about five and a half Earth years. Such storms are larger and much more intense than regular ones. They encircle the entire planet. That's why scientists call them global dust storms. At the same time, it's unlikely that even a global dust storm could cause serious harm to astronauts or their equipment. Even though Martian storms are massive, the wind speed reaches 60 miles per hour tops. That's less than half the speed of most hurricane force winds on Earth. 
Plus, this comparison of wind speeds can be kind of misleading. The atmosphere on Mars is just 1% or so as dense as the atmosphere on our planet. It means that the wind there needs to blow much faster to cause any damage or even fly a kite. Now let's move to the next amazing phenomenon spotted on the red planet. When you look at it from a distance, it looks like an eye. There are even some winding channels that look like veins running through the eyeball. But the closer you get, the less the formation looks like an actual eye. It's actually a giant crater, almost 19 miles in diameter. Around the crater, which looks as if it has a pupil, there are other, even bigger craters. They likely formed billions of years ago. That's when Mars had to withstand multiple attacks of space rocks. But why is the eye crater darker than the surrounding landscape? Scientists think that once, water filled the ginormous pit. Remember those channels? They were likely carrying that water. And since the crater was filled with water, it stopped some substances and minerals from eroding away. Your next destination is Valles Marineris. That's an enormous canyon, or rather, a canyon system that runs along Mars' equator. It stretches for more than 2,500 miles. It's also four times as deep as the famous Grand Canyon on Earth. The thing is so huge, it could span the entire continental United States from the Pacific to the Atlantic Ocean. Most scientists think that Valles Marineris is a huge tectonic crack in the crust of the red planet. It could have formed when the planet was cooling down in the distant past. Another breathtaking sight on Mars is the largest shield volcano in the entire solar system, Olympus Mons. It's more than 370 miles in diameter, which means it's almost the same size as the state of Arizona. The mountain is also 16 miles high and rimmed by incredibly tall cliffs. To imagine the sheer size of the volcano, let's make some comparisons. The largest volcano on Earth is Mauna Loa, around 2.6 miles high and 75 miles across, which actually sounds pretty impressive. But the volume of Olympus Mons is around 100 times larger than that of Mauna Loa. The Martian giant could swallow the whole chain of Hawaiian islands from Kauai to Hawaii. Scientists have been wondering for quite some time why this volcano is so large. It might be the result of lower surface gravity and higher eruption rates. Or the reason may be the red planet's crust, which is very different from Earth's. On our planet, the crust is made up of 15 to 20 moving tectonic plates. As plates move over hotspots that produce lava, new volcanoes form, and the already existing ones become extinct. That's why lava can get to the surface through many vents. But on Mars, the crust isn't broken into the same tectonic plates as on Earth, and the lava has nothing to do but pile in one very, very large volcano. Now, if you visited Mars and decided to go on an evening stroll, you'd witness a strange phenomenon. It occurs on the red planet after sunset, when temperatures fall below negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit. A bizarre, mysterious glow spreads across the Martian sky. Unfortunately, without special equipment, you wouldn't be able to observe this soft glow. Visible only in ultraviolet light, this night glow is the result of chemical reactions that occur dozens of miles above the surface of the red planet. It's staring at you, and you're staring at it. A giant eye that seems to be pulling you into an abyss. You're hovering over it in your space copter. But, however scared you might be, you still need to do your job. So you send your copter down to the surface of the red planet. Right, that's where you are, on Mars. But first things first, you take a moment to remember everything you know about the fourth planet from the Sun. It's the last of the inner planets. Those are the planets that lie within the asteroid belt. They're also called terrestrial, since they're made up of rocks and metals. The atmosphere of Mars is much thinner than Earth's. It contains 95% carbon dioxide and a mere 1% of oxygen. In other words, don't even think about pulling off your helmet. Anyway, there's no time to waste. You land on the surface of the planet and find yourself in a brownish-red world. That's a good thing you're wearing a spacesuit. This place is freezing cold. 
The thermometer sewn into the sleeve of your suit shows minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Time to take your first step on the Martian surface. The planet looks quite colorful, and the hue of a particular area depends on the minerals that make up the soil. The ground under your feet is covered in fine dust. It looks like rust. The same orange dust is in the air. Good thing you have your own supply of oxygen and don't need to breathe Martian air. The layer of this dust covering the surface of Mars can be from 6 to 40 feet thick. You hope you'll avoid getting swallowed by some Martian quicksand. You start walking, feeling very light. Mars is just 15% of our planet's volume and a mere 11% of Earth's mass. It means that gravity here is much weaker. Its pull is 38% as strong as the pull of gravity on the surface of Earth. You jump up and down and then try to run several hundred feet. Ha! Ah, you haven't even broken a sweat. What makes it harder for you to explore the place on foot is that the planet's surface is rocky, covered with craters and volcanoes, old dry lake beds, and canyons. You see something huge towering on the horizon, but you try to suppress your curiosity. You'll have enough time to figure out what it is later. Suddenly, a massive cloud appears in the distance. It looks as if a huge herd of horses is approaching you. In reality, you better get back into your copter and fly away as fast as you can. That's one of Mars's infamous dust storms. They mostly occur during the summer in the southern hemisphere of the red planet. They can sometimes cover the entire planet. And you see the largest ones from Earth. You hop into your copter and set a course for the eye that scared you so much. Winding channels that look like veins run through the eyeball. But the closer you get, the less it looks like an actual eye. Soon you realize it's a crater. It's giant, almost 19 miles across. Around the crater, which looks as if it has a pupil, there are other even bigger craters. They likely formed billions of years ago. That's when Mars had to withstand multiple attacks of space rocks. But why is the eye crater darker than the surrounding landscape? Scientists think that once, there was Martian water in the enormous pit. Remember those channels? They were likely carrying that water. And since the crater was filled with water, it stopped some substances and minerals from eroding away. Now, remember that towering something on the horizon? It's time to go and explore it. When you come close, you realize it's the largest shield volcano in the entire solar system, Olympus Mons. It's more than 370 miles in diameter, which is almost the same size as the state of Arizona. You tilt your head. Wow! The mountain is 16 miles high. It's also rimmed by 4-mile-high cliffs. To picture the sheer size of the volcano, let's make some comparisons. The largest volcano on Earth is Mauna Loa, towering around 2.5 miles above sea level and stretching 75 miles across. Sounds impressive. But the volume of Olympus Mons is around 100 times larger than that of Mauna Loa. The Martian giant could swallow the whole chain of Hawaiian islands from Kauai to Hawaii. But why is this volcano so large? It might be the result of lower surface gravity and higher eruption rates. Or the reason might be the red planet's crust, which is very different from Earth's. It's static. You see, on our planet, the crust is made of 15 to 20 moving tectonic plates. As plates move over hot spots producing lava, new volcanoes form, and the already existing ones become extinct. That's why lava can get to the surface through many vents. But on Mars, the crust isn't broken into the same tectonic plates as on Earth, and the lava has nothing to do but pile in one very, very large volcano. So, how about getting closer to the enormous mountain? But once you step out of your copter on Martian soil, the ground under your feet starts shaking. Well, that's a Mars quake. But how can it happen if Mars doesn't have any actively shifting tectonic plates? Specialists from NASA are sure Mars quakes occur when energy inside the planet gets suddenly released. It leads to rock fractures and cracks in the planet's crust. Another powerful jolt and one of such cracks opens right next to you. You fall to the ground, afraid to move. But soon, everything calms down. You wait for a couple of minutes, just to be sure, and get up. Oh look! Here's a perfect opportunity to explore the insides of the red planet. The crack is large enough to send a special research robot. 
The planet's crust is thin and consists of volcanic basalt rock. The mantle that surrounds the core of the planet is made up of thick silicates, oxygen, and some minerals. You can probably compare it with soft, rocky toothpaste. Mars's mantle is also much thinner than Earth's. It's just 800 to 1100 miles thick. As for the planet's core, it's made mostly of iron, nickel, and sulfur and is between 900 and 1200 miles wide. This core doesn't move. That's why Mars doesn't have a planet-wide magnetic field. Unfortunately, your drone is now lost in the depths of the red planet. You leave it there and continue your exploration. Your next destination is Valles Marineris. It sounds more like an Italian red sauce, but it's actually an enormous canyon, or rather a canyon system, that runs along Mars's equator. It's as awe-inspiring as Olympus Mons, more than 2,600 miles long and over 4 miles deep. The thing is so huge, it could span the entire continental United States from the Pacific to the Atlantic Ocean. Now let's make another comparison. One of the most famous canyons on Earth is the Grand Canyon in Arizona. But it's 10 times shorter and around 4 times less deep than this canyon on Mars. Some scientists think that Valles Marineris is the edge of an enormous tectonic plate. It moves so slowly that almost nothing has happened in that region over millions of years. And the movement of this plate probably began 3.5 billion years ago. Anyway, the only thing left on your today's to-do list is to visit Mars's moons. They're among the tiniest in the solar system. Phobos is the largest of the two. It orbits a mere 3,700 miles above the surface of Mars. There's no other known moon that travels closer to its mother planet. It whips around the red planet three times a day, while the second moon, Deimos, needs 30 hours to complete one orbit. Phobos is getting closer and closer to Mars, about 6 feet each 100 years. Within the next 50 million years, it'll either crash into the planet or break apart and form a ring. Happy but tired, you return to your spaceship. Tomorrow, you'll continue exploring the magnificent red planet. And who knows what discoveries are awaiting you. Hold on to your space helmets because NASA's Curiosity rover has just stumbled upon the wildest rock formation ever. And on April Fool's Day, isn't that just the weirdest coincidence? The device captured some images with some rocks that look like dragon bones. Now, let me take you back to 2012 when Curiosity made its grand entrance on Martian soil. It was like the queen bee of rovers, the biggest and most capable one at the time. And boy, has it been making waves since then. It's even discovered evidence of water and organic molecules on Mars. These findings were giant leaps in our quest to find out if Mars ever had its own little creatures. But hey, let's not forget that Curiosity is no spring chicken anymore. It's been trotting around Mars for a solid 11 years, and its heyday may have come and gone with the launch of the shiny new Perseverance rover. Nevertheless, Curiosity still manages to capture our imagination with its knack for spotting familiar-looking rocks. From objects shaped like fish backbones to ones that resemble traffic lights, Curiosity has given us plenty to marvel at. But now the internet is exploding with excitement over the jaw-dropping images from Curiosity's masked camera. People are going bonkers over what can only be described as dragon bones. One astrobiologist acknowledged we've seen our fair share of weird-looking objects on Mars. But this one exceeded all expectations. The current theory is that these unique ripples on the structure were formed after a whole lot of erosion, probably caused by the Martian winds. Now, you might be thinking, okay, cool, but what's the big deal about a funky rock? Well, for starters, it's a reminder of just how much we still have to uncover about our mysterious red neighbor. While we're gazing over potential dragon bones and daydreaming about interplanetary adventures, Curiosity has its serious hat on. Its main mission is to gather as much data as possible and figure out if Mars was ever a cozy home for teeny tiny microbial life forms. It isn't the first time our trusty Curiosity rover has stumbled upon something truly out of this world. Our robotic explorer buddy has also given us a peek at a teeny tiny rock on the red planet. It bears an uncanny resemblance to a fossilized book. Can you imagine stumbling upon a Martian library? On the 3,800th Martian day of its mission, our adventurous rover captured an intriguing snapshot of this unusual discovery. Using its nifty Mars hand lens imager attached to its robotic arm, Curiosity snapped a pic of this rock that looks like it's been plucked straight from a librarian's wildest dreams. 
Before you get too carried away with fantasies of outer space reading materials, let's clarify the dimensions of this rock. While it may resemble a book, it's pint-sized in comparison. In fact, it's only a mere one inch across. So don't go expecting the next Martian bestseller to hit the shelves anytime soon. It's more of a pocket-sized edition, perfect for a quick read during interplanetary commutes. Now before you get too excited about this discovery, do know that NASA officials commented that peculiarly shaped rocks are pretty common on Mars. Also, billions of years of relentless Martian winds have swept away everything except these uniquely shaped remnants. Curiosity has quite the eye for spotting unusual formations. Back in February 2022, our rover pal stumbled upon a mineral flower with branching patterns that looked like it had been styled by a florist. It measured a petite 0.4 inch in width. And just a few weeks later, on February 16th, Curiosity managed to capture some rocky evidence of ancient lakes featuring teeny ripples and waves frozen in time. If you thought Mars was just a desolate red wasteland, think again. Scientists have even discovered larger scale shapes etched into the Martian surface by ancient water. For instance, there's a rock formation that bears an uncanny resemblance to the adorable face of a teddy bear. Who knew Mars had a cuddly side? And to top it off, there's another rock that looks like the spitting image of the frizzy-haired cartoon character. But curiosity isn't just about oddities and peculiarities. Remember that time on February 2nd when the rover unveiled the first clear images of sun rays on Mars? Picture this. As the sun dips below the Martian horizon during sunrises or sunsets, its rays create a mesmerizing sight as they pierce through gaps in the clouds. It's like Mother Nature's own laser light show. There are even images online with a so-called doorway on Mars. And no, it's not a secret passage for little green Martians to hop in and out of, if that's what you're thinking. The internet went bonkers when Curiosity captured a snapshot that seemed to reveal an object resembling a door. Cue the weird theories and intergalactic excitement, nothing to worry about, as experts have chimed in with a down-to-earth explanation. According to specialists who know a thing or two about Mars geology, this particular structure is most likely the result of natural erosion. Boring answer, I know, but erosion is yet again to blame here. However, some scientists have also chimed in with a dash of humor on the matter. They pointed out that the door stands at a modest height of less than three feet. So even if we were to believe it's a doorway for Martians, we'd have to imagine a particular type of tiny extraterrestrial beings like Martian hobbits. But let's get back to reality, shall we? The consensus among experts is that this door is nothing more than a shallow opening in the rock, cleverly crafted by the forces of nature. Those visible layers were likely deposited around 4 billion years ago under sedimentary conditions, potentially in a river or a wind-blown dune. The winds on Mars have been hard at work, eroding these layers over time, leaving behind the intriguing features we see today. And if you look closely, you'll notice a few natural vertical fractures scattered throughout the image. These fractures are a result of rocks weathering on Mars, and the small cave-like structure we've affectionately nicknamed the door seems to have formed at the intersection of these fractures and the aforementioned layers. It's almost as if a gigantic Martian boulder decided to take a tumble, creating this whimsical cave entrance. There's also a famous Mars crater that's not just your ordinary run-of-the-mill hole in the ground. It's chock full of shiny opal gemstones. According to a cool new study, those mysterious halos of rock surrounding cracks in the Martian crater might actually be made up of water-rich opal gemstones. Can you imagine that? Mars, the planet of bling! Curiosity yet again came to the rescue and did some serious snooping around. It seems there's an ancient dried-up lake bed on Mars that is teeming with opal gemstones. These objects could be evidence that water and rock have been having a grand old time beneath the Martian surface. Much more recently than anyone had previously thought, that is. Now, when scientists start talking about water, you know they're on the hunt for signs of life. After all, water is pretty crucial for life as we know it. But here's the catch. Water isn't flowing on Mars anymore. So these clever scientists have to put on their detective hats and search for geological signs that water once existed there. What does opal have to do with water on the Martian surface? Well, to make opal, you need rocks with a whole lot of silica and some good old H2O. There's more. Researchers also dove deep into the Curiosity rover's image archive and discovered that these opal-rich halos are not just hanging out in one spot. Nope. 
They seem to be spread out all over the place in Gale Crater, which is like a huge ancient lake bed. So what did these clever scientists do next? They ran some tests, of course. Using Curiosity's fancy instruments, they confirmed that these light-colored halos do, in fact, contain opal. All this data and those cool fracture halo pictures from earlier in the mission led the researchers to a mind-boggling conclusion. Water must have been hanging out all over Gale Crater for a long time after the ancient lake dried up. This means that life might have existed on Mars and for a bit longer than we'd been guessing. Who knows, maybe even into Mars's modern geological period, which get this started a whopping 2.9 billion years ago. So imagine being one of the first people sent to explore Mars. As you're approaching the red planet, something strange and creepy draws your attention. There, yes, right there. Doesn't it look like a mammoth bear's head? What or who could possibly create a bear snout in the middle of a crater? Unfortunately, or should I say luckily, there's nothing mysterious about the bear's head. It's just a facial pareidolia. That's a tendency to see facial features in everyday things. Hmm. But speaking about the finding on Mars, should we rename the phenomenon into Beridolia? You could see that coming, couldn't you? Alright, check it out. You see a V-shaped hill that looks like a nose. Then there are two craters that look like eyes. And then there's a circular fracture pattern, the head, that surrounds the nose and the eyes. Experts think that the face could be created when a deposit was settling over a buried impact crater. And the nose might be a mud or volcanic vent with solidified lava or mud flows around it. Anyway, the crater does look like a bear's face, I'll give you that. But thanks to HiRISE, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter's high-resolution imaging science experiment camera, another of NASA's amazing acronyms, we've seen many other crazy craters on the red planet. Like smiley faces, a bird, or an elephant. First, let's have a look at the famous face of Mars. These images were first taken by the Viking orbiter in 1976. At that time, the resolution was obviously quite poor, plus the lighting was slanted, which produced the result that shocked people in the 1970s – a face carved of rock staring back at Earth. Did it mean there was another civilization on Mars that had created this monument? Nah. Look at the photo of the same spot taken by the current Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. The resolution is much, much better, and the face has miraculously turned into an ordinary hill. Or look at this teeny Bigfoot, whose image was captured in 2008. I say teeny because this creature is just a few inches tall. And when the photo was taken, Bigfoot was only several yards away from the camera. And here, one curious soul zoomed in on a small rock and spotted something that resembled a gorilla. That's how some people started to believe there were apes on Mars. Yeah, really. Let me show you some more examples of imaginary creatures and faces on the red planet. Most of them come from a series of images taken by the Themis camera. Currently, it's on board the Mars Odyssey spacecraft, which only needs two hours to orbit the red planet, carrying some important scientific instruments. Let me introduce my happy Martian to you. This two-mile-wide crater was photographed in 2008. The next crater chain looks like a wasp with its wispy wings of impact debris. The whole feature was probably created by a meteorite that fell at a very low angle and broke into pieces right before the impact. Now, do you see a woolly mammoth or an elephant here? Lava flows in one region on Mars left this image on its reddish soil. The region itself, called Elysium Planitia, is famous for the planet's youngest lava flows. For example, the one that looks like a mammoth most likely formed in the past 100 million years. Eh, just yesterday. Now let's talk about love, or rather its symbol, the heart. Do you like these two hearts on the surface of the red planet? This one is actually a mesa top outlined by frost. And this heart shape is an impact crater. The hit tore away dark surface material and exposed lighter soil underneath. Then some of the material probably flew downslope, creating the heart. And this dust-covered hummingbird. Can you see its long beak and head? Scientists aren't sure how this shape was formed, but they think erosion and wind played a part in its creation. These dark sand dune deposits look like a howling wolf. And here, can you see a series of interlocking gears? This image looks like the letter T, right? The right angle fracture was created by the tectonic stretching of the Martian crust. 
Do you think we might find other letters of the alphabet on Mars, too? Why not? And now, how about another bizarre thing astronomers noticed on the surface of Mars? Is that a door to someone's house? It was NASA's Curiosity rover that sent this image to Earth. It became viral because this formation over here, see, looks like a door. Unfortunately, scientists, due to their rational minds, were quick to disappoint us. They claimed that it was just a natural part of the Martian landscape. There were several clues that made them think it wasn't a real door. For example, the opening is tiny, a mere 3 feet high. They're sure that what looks like a door is actually an opening in a rock created by natural forces, like winds and erosion. If you look at the rock closely, you may notice strata. Those are layers of silt that stand out because they're harder than the surrounding material. These strata dip here on the left and a bit higher on the right. They likely appeared around 4 billion years ago in a river or a windblown dune. Since the strata became visible, powerful Martian winds have eroded them even more. And look at this! See those cracks? That's how rocks weather on the red planet. This small cave probably formed when several fractures crossed the strata. A pretty large boulder might have fallen out under its own weight. And this created the door-shaped opening. This theory is quite plausible, because even though the gravity on Mars isn't as strong as on Earth, it's still strong enough to do it. Besides, see that rock to the right of the opening? It has a suspiciously smooth vertical edge. It must be the culprit. It probably fell out not so long ago. But it's not only the red planet that can boast of having unusual formations. Let's take this comet, for example. This image was taken by the European spacecraft Rosetta in 2014. Can you see a face on its right-hand side? Or the moon. Here's its famous rabbit. It sits upside down, with its ears pointing downward. Some people see a man on the moon. It can either be his face or the entire body. If someone sees the whole human figure, it usually looks like it's carrying sticks. Sometimes, it's a toad. To spot it, look at the top left-hand side of our moon. The toad is facing upward, see? Now, look at this spinning neutron star. Such a star is a collapsed core of a supergiant star with a total mass of 10 to 25 solar masses. Except for black holes and some hypothetical objects, like quark stars or white holes, neutron stars are the densest and smallest known stellar objects. Anyway, back to this particular star. As you can see, this space object, located 17,000 light-years away from Earth, is surrounded by a cloud of energetic particles. And this image, taken by NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory, appeared in 2009 and became viral in no time. All because many people spotted a hand-like structure among all that space stuff. NASA explained that the star was spinning incredibly fast, spewing energy into the space surrounding it. This created intriguing and complex structures, like the large cosmic hand so many people see. Now, look at the Horsehead Nebula in the constellation Orion. This is a freezing cold and dark cloud of dust and gas that was first noted in 1888. This dark shadowing is created by dust. And at the base of the nebula, there are many bright spots. Those are young stars at the stage of formation. Pay attention to this extremely bright star in the top left side of the horse head. Its radiation is so powerful that the star is starting to erode the cloud around itself. It means that, in millions of years, the nebula might not resemble the head of a horse anymore. Well, I won't be around then. The European Southern Observatory Very Large Telescope has captured an image in which we can see the collision of three different galaxies. We can even observe the effect they have on each other. But the coolest thing is that, while colliding, they created a recognizable shape. Because doesn't it look like a giant space hummingbird? It seems like NASA and China are each planning to send humans to Mars. Both space agencies have tentative plans to launch the first crewed missions by 2033. Right when Mars and Earth are playing a game of tag. And that's not all. Other missions may happen in 2035, 2037, and beyond. The ultimate goal is to build a Mars habitat for future exploration and research. So, how are they going to do that? Well, let's find out. Now, traveling to Mars isn't as easy as hopping on a rocket. 
the distance between our planets can change a lot over time, ranging from around 35 million miles to 250 million miles. And even with our best technology, it takes 6 to 9 months just to get to the red planet. So, a round trip to Mars could mean spending 3 years away from Earth, dealing with extra radiation and floating around in microgravity. But NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory has some exciting news. Scientists have been working tirelessly to design a minimal architecture mission to Mars. They're thinking that 2033 is the perfect year to make it happen. So here's the deal. Every 15 years, the rocky planets – Venus, Mars, and Earth – align just right to create a cosmic sweet spot. The mission will make the most of this rare alignment and perform an epic gravity assist maneuver using Venus. It's like getting a boost from a planetary slingshot. We'll speed up our spacecraft and reduce the need for making our own propulsion. The report also talked about some really cool ideas, like using nuclear power for spacecraft engines and using Martian resources to make things. These technologies could make space travel faster, protect astronauts from radiation, and make it easier to live in space. They might even let us make resources and fuel right on Mars. So this is how the plan goes down. First, we'll launch a spacecraft towards Mars. It'll spend around 30 days in high orbit, exploring and gathering valuable data. Then it's going to head back to Earth, also swinging by Venus for a quick visit. So this whole adventure will last approximately 570 days, which is just 1.6 years. And a shorter adventure means less exposure to radiation. Now keep in mind, this mission will focus on orbiting Mars rather than landing on its surface. It's just a stepping stone, paving the way for future landing missions. Just like Apollo 8 mission orbited the Moon before Apollo 11's historic landing. Landing on Mars by 2033 might be a bit too ambitious due to funding constraints, but who knows? If all goes smoothly, it could become a reality. Now for the coolest part. We don't need fancy new technologies or vehicles for all this. We'll make use of existing ones that are already in production or being studied for the Artemis Moon program. Now let's break down our Mars mission vehicle. A big puzzle of many parts. And guess what? It was put together by a community of space enthusiasts back in 2017. That's right, it wasn't the scientists who produced it first. But now, this isn't just some fantastic idea anymore. Most of these things are already becoming a reality, being made or planned by NASA. So let's take a look at this concept. First, we have the Orion spacecraft. This is the spaceship that will take the crew to the orbit around Earth and bring them safely back home. It's like a super fancy space taxi, and it might be the most powerful taxi to ever exist. It's combined with three powerful propulsion stages, and we're also using a special fuel that doesn't need to be ultra-cold like in the movies. Next, there's the Earth departure stage. This is an important part of the mission. It helps us make a powerful thrust that sends us on our way to Mars. Then we have Mars Transit Habitat. This is where the crew will live and hang out during their journey to Mars. Like a cozy space house with all the things they need to be comfortable. And finally, the Mars Orbit Insertion Stage. When we reach Mars, this awesome thing will help us slow down and enter its orbit smoothly. It's our maneuvering expert. Even the Mars transit habitat is being developed and might even be tested in a few years. That means we're on track to have the whole thing ready for our amazing Mars mission by 2033. In other words, it's all about working with what we've got and making it happen. Now, let's talk about the plan's timeline. Mid-2028, the action begins. First, we'll need to do a couple of test flights. We'll send two stages ahead of time to make sure we can come back to Earth safely. These stages will join together like two spaceships becoming best buddies. They'll orbit the red planet and then come home. To do all that, we'll use powerful rockets and 13 commercial launches. It's going to be a huge space party. 
late 2032. After all that, we launched the fully assembled Mars mission vehicle to high Earth orbit. So far, this is an empty vehicle that awaits astronauts. If all is good, then it'll be ready for the final check. March 2033. Time for our brave crew and their Orion spacecraft to join the party. We launch them, and they dock with the Mars mission vehicle in Earth's orbit. They'll make sure the whole lot is just right before we head to Mars. Flexibility is important, so we can adjust our plans if needed. April 2033. Everyone's ready for the adventure. We perform a powerful burn, like a big push that sends us on our way to Mars. The crew will travel for about 200 days. November 2033. Finally, the crew reaches the red planet. Once they're in Mars orbit, they'll spend about 30 days exploring and doing awesome space stuff. Mars will be our playground. When it's time to return home, they'll say goodbye to the stage that helped them get into Mars orbit. Then their vehicle will meet up with the two stages we sent ahead. Remember these space buddies? And after that, it will take us about 340 days for the crew to come back to Earth. This is where we'll use the gravity of Venus to slingshot around the Sun. To keep the equipment and crew at the right temperature, we'll have a sunshade that will protect us from the Sun's heat since we'll be really close to it. In the end, Orion will re-enter Earth's atmosphere and splash down in the water. What a heroic ending! And this would be just the beginning! Our awesome team has another plan for the bravest adventurers out there. It's called the Conjunction Class Long Stay Mission. It launches in April 2033 and lasts a long time 950 days. That's more than two and a half years, with 550 days spent in Mars orbit. It requires fewer launches from Earth, but has some different challenges, like spending more time in microgravity and dealing with increased radiation. So we'll need some real space heroes for this one. But of course, there are some major hurdles to overcome before we can make all this happen. Experts closely looked at NASA's Journey to Mars program and found that the plan needs some serious changes. There are a few high-risk areas, like life support systems for long missions, using solar power for propulsion, making oxygen on Mars, and so on. They're also worried about timelines, funding, and many other things. So, according to them, sticking to a deadline of 2033 might be impossible with the current plans and budgets. Even aiming for 2035 carries significant risks and possible delays. But hey, space exploration has never been easy, right? With realistic determination, anything is possible. Most likely, the idea of sending people to Mars will be realized before 2040. NASA is working on finishing the plan in details to make this possible. So, even though we still have some tough nuts to crack before we can make it a reality, the dream of sending humans to Mars is exciting. It's a thrilling adventure full of challenges, discoveries, and the spirit.